Okay, before I get started with this video about Tony West, I'm going to show you again. Tonight is August the 23rd, just like last night. What do I say every night in the middle of the night happens to Uber stock? Look, it's going, it's going. It's all day long. It's pretty even. It's all, As long as retail people are trading, this is what happens in retail. But when retail drops off, and these are the night traders, look, all of a sudden, it was at 74.37. It drops all the way down to 71.64. That's about a $3 drop, almost a $3 drop. But then it goes from 71 all the way up to 78. That's a $7 gain. So therefore, you got a $3 drop and a $7 gain. That's 10 because you go short it, three down, seven up. That's 10. But then it goes from 78 back down to 74, 14. That's a $14 per share finagle, what you can do every night. $14 per share for Nagel. And then guess what? It's right back on track again. It's right back on track where it was all day over here. 74 it was on track. It was on. So when people wake up in the morning, they don't even know this happened because most people don't look at this in the middle of the night. They just look at it. What? Well, what is it opening at? What did it close at? That's all they worry about. And so we on this channel, we kind of dig into the, the midnight psyche. What's going on in the middle of the night? And one day, everything I'm documenting on this channel is going to become valid. They're going to say this guy was on to something because why was it retail was always even retail was always even. But in the middle of the night, somebody was moving a whole lot of stock to make this go from seventy four dollars all the way down to seventy one, a three dollar swap. And then all the way from seventy one up to seventy eight, a seven dollar flip. And then all the way from seventy eight down to seventy four. That's $14 worth of activity. That's per share, $14 per share of activity. If you have 2 billion shares, that's $28 billion of movement, potentially. $28 billion of movement from 4.55 p.m. to 5.40. That's one hour. You're moving $28 billion in an hour. $28 billion, you're shorting it. You buy it low, you hurry up and you push it all the way up and you sell it high and it drops back down. You keep shorting it, buying it, shorting it, buying it. You say, hey, you know what? Let's short it real quick. Short it down to 71. All right, cool. We're at 71.64. We shorted it. All right, now buy it all back. We buy a ton back. Shoot it all the way up to 78. Okay, let's sell it all. Short it again, 74. That's almost 28 billion. And that's only like, you know, that's if all shares were like that, all shares. But I think they're doing some somebody with a lot of shares with insider trading access is moving this money around at Uber. And I think the Justice Department should probably look at it. Speaking of the Justice Department, let's start this video. So I wanted to drop this article. It was a New York Post article written by Daniel Huff, I believe. Let's let's is by Daniel Huff and Clark S. Judge. Now this is about Tony West. For anybody who don't know who Tony West is, let me bring you up to speed. Tony West is Kamala Harris's brother-in-law. He is also the head of Uber Legal. Now, before Uber Legal, he was the head of the civil division of the Justice Department. He was an Obama appointee. So just, just to bring you to scale what's going on, when I read you this article, you're going to see why he's at Uber, what he's doing at Uber, and why he's now in conjunction with the White House while he's still on council at Uber. It's, it's very convoluted. It's very convoluted. But I'm reading this to you from two guys. Like I said, Daniel Huff, Clark S. Judge. They dropped this on uh, August the 23rd, 2024. Now, if you want to know who these guys are, Daniel Huff is a former counsel to the Senate and House Judiciary Committees. Clark S. Judge is the managing director of the White House Writers Group Incorporated. So these two guys are Washington insiders. They know everything there is to know about everybody in Washington and everybody who wants to do something in Washington. These guys know. So let me read you this article. Sit back, relax. I'm going to read you this article that they dropped on the 23rd today. Today is the 23rd. And the article starts, it says, Joe Biden's son, Hunter, may be the current world class champ of presidential family shady dealings, but not for long. Follow me. If Kamala Harris wins the White House, her brother in law, Tony West, who is married to her sister, Maya, is poised to claim the crooked crown. Like Hunter, 
West learned his crap in the Obama years. Then, then head of the Justice Department Civil Division, he invented a new form of what 19th, early 20th century to Manny boss George Washington Plunkett famously called honest graft. Keep that in mind, honest graft. It was simple. Until 1977, Congress had to approve any settlement of a civil suit against the federal government over $100,000. That means if you want to sue the government for any reason and it was over $100,000, Congress had to approve the settlement. They said, you know what, we're not just going to be out there paying settlements. We want to know what this lawsuit is for, who was involved. I mean, it was a whole process up until 1977. This preserved the constitutional requirement that Congress control government's purse. But in that year, seeking relief from the burgeoning volume of suits to review, Congress removed the cap, handing the Justice Department a permanent blank check to pay settlements unilaterally in any amount out of an account known as the judgment fund. So when Congress removed that $100,000 cap and said, hey, we used to look at everything that was going on there over $100,000. You know what? We don't care. We're going to let you guys do it. We got way too many cases to review. We're going to let you guys do it. So Congress pulled back and said, you guys can check it out, Justice Department. Run by the Treasury Department, the Judgment Fund's secrecy is so complete that our often penetrated CIA might study it for lessons. It is so secret when you're dealing with the Judgment Fund. The limited data release omits recipients, the facts underlying the case, and often the lawyers involved. Whenever you sue them, the judgment fund won't tell you the recipients, the facts underlying the case, and the lawyers involved. It is too secretive. You won't know who's doing what. But yet now, they're just giving people a blank check to write money to people you have no idea who they are. Keep following me. By statute, attorney's fees awarded needs not be disclosed. So once this happened, the attorney's fees awarded are no longer disclosed because Congress used to approve everything. Congress don't approve it no more. Justice Department approves it now. Blank check. Attorney's fees awarded needs not be disclosed. A government accountability office study concluded that no one knows the number of claims processed by the federal government each year. Still, for three decades, the integrity of the justice officials sufficed to prevent abuse. Then in 2009, Tony West took over the Department Civil Division, the division that litigates and settles lawsuits. Now we're getting good. 2009, Tony West took over. We already know that Congress no longer approves anything. It's been like not like that since 1977. It's not been quite crazy up until 2009. Tony West took over. Once West arrived, his deputy emailed colleagues asking, can you explain to Tony the best way to allocate some money towards an organization of our choosing? His colleagues was emailing, hey, how, who do we give this money to? That's basically what they were saying. When we get these clients, who do we give money to? Can we donate them to an organization? Settlements became the vehicle for payoffs of political allies. When Tony was hit, Settlements became the vehicle for paying off political allies. For example, in late 2010, after a Supreme Court victory, the DOJ lawyers, Tony West was there, were on the cusp of winning a decade-long fight against discrimination claims by 91 Hispanic and female farmers. The DOJ lawyers were about to win. The government was about to win a fight against a discrimination case by 91 Hispanic and female farmers. That's when Wes intervened, as the New York Times put it, engineering a stunning turnabout. Tony West's DOJ, even though they were going to win the case. These 91 Hispanic farmers and female, 91 Hispanics and female, they had no way to win it. They had no way to win it. Tony West, knowing the new scheme, the honest graph, agreed to a $1.33 billion settlement, which included thousands of farmers who had never claimed bias. So Tony West was like, listen, we get to settle cases now. Nobody knows who's involved in these cases because of the secrecy of the judgment fund. But if we let this case go to court 
Everybody would know because it'll be public knowledge. Let's settle for it. The DOJ agreed to a $1.33 billion settlement, which included thousands of farmers who had never claimed bias. They were throwing people in there just to boost the claim up. Tony West Justice Department knew the game. They knew the game. The deal was made over vehement objections of the department career lawyers. There were lawyers that were already at the DOJ for years with a career at the DOJ, and they made vehement objections to what was going on. Tony, we don't like this. We were going to win this case. We don't like this. Tony said, hey, we're not going to go about winning. We're going to settle because I got law firms involved and nobody needs to know who I got involved. The honest graft. The Times investigated reporter described West settlement as a runaway train driven by racial politics and law firms that stand to gain more than one hundred and thirty million dollars in fees. This is why he wanted to settle. This is why Uber settles. This is why everybody settles, because it's the law firms involved. The law firms involved who are run by Tony West and his cohorts stand to gain more than $130 million in fees. The projected settlement size ballooned to over $4.4 billion as additional plaintiffs were added, including Native American farmers. It started with 91 Hispanic female farmers. 91 Hispanic and female farmers. And then all of a sudden it grew to Native American farmers because Tony West and crew with the honest grab started saying the bigger this settlement, the more we get as attorneys, the more we get. We got to make this settlement pretty big. If we're going to hit the government, we got a blank check. I know who I got involved. We can donate this money to political parties and law firms out there. Follow me now. Follow me. The government statistical expert was appalled. If they had gone to trial, the government would have prevailed. It was just a joke. I was so disgusted. It was simply buying the support of the Native Americans. The dirty deal also inflated the number of claimants, creating a $60 million windfall for the plaintiff's lead lawyer, a member of the Obama-Biden transition team. So you see what Tony West did, right? You see what he did. The government said the expert was appalled. He's like, hey, if they had gone to trial, the government would have won. This case was a slam dunk for the government. The government would have walked. Tony West came in on his grab. He said, we're going to actually settle this. Not only are we going to settle it, we're going to bring more people in. We're going to bring in a ton of more. We're going to start adding Native Americans. We're going to make this a racial case. We're going to make it a racial case. They made it a racial case. The dirty deal also inflated the number of claims. It's creating a $60 million windfall for the plaintiff's lead lawyer, a member of the Obama-Biden transition team. He was paying political opponents. Biden brought him in. Obama brought him in to do this. They brought him in and say, there's a loophole. We're attorneys. We know how this work. Let's get this money. But West did not just build taxpayers. He shook down corporations, too. In a series of bank settlements, his team added increasingly aggressive provisions requiring the institutions, banks, to make nearly a billion dollars in mandatory donations to Democrat supporting activist groups. He wouldn't let them settle unless they made payments. These were ransom payments, donations, mandatory donations. If you got a mandatory donation, that's called ransom. To Democrats supporting activist groups, donations were given double credit against required targets, incentivizing these payments over direct relief to victims of the housing crises. So if you, they're saying if you pay us directly and you give us the money directly, not to the victims of the housing crisis, don't give them the money, give us the money directly, we're going to double the credit. So it's almost like you're getting a two for one deal. But if you go to the victims, we're not giving you any credit. We're going to give you straight credit. You're going to end up paying way more trying to give relief to the actual victims of the housing. Credit. This is Tony West, y'all. This is who we're talking about dealing with Kamala Harris right now. Now, West team specifically structured the terms to ensure that they would benefit only their political allies while leaving conservative groups ineligible. 
This was all race based and it was politics based. He was in the Department of Justice. Obama appointed him. This is how they were running game on the American taxpayers by settling all these cases, not letting them go to court. All of the career attorneys that were at the Department of Justice were like, something is going wrong. That's why he left, because they started. Everybody's like, dude, you're, you're tripping, man. You're tripping. You're doing something wrong. When Obama left, he had to get out of there because they knew at that point, if Obama leaves, oh, man, I'm here by myself. I got to get out of here. Let me continue. An internal email shows West deputy is rewording a settlement donation provision to ensure the bank could not select a conservative property rights organization as a recipient. You heard that right. The internal email of the DOJ, Tony West DOJ, the deputies had to reword a settlement, the settlement's donation provisions to ensure the bank that they were suing, that they had a settlement on, could not select a conservative property rights organization as a recipient. Over time, West grew even more brazen. In 2016, Volkswagen settlement required a company to fund a $2 billion White House electric car initiative that Congress had initially rejected. Congress didn't want to do that. It, we ain't doing no you know, electric car initiative. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. But guess what? When the DOJ got a hold of it, Tony West, no oversight. Congress don't have to approve anything. He said, we'll settle for you. 2016 Volkswagen settlement. But the settlement says you guys have to fund a two billion dollar White House electric car initiative. They're like, but Congress already. Hey, you want to settle this, right? You want to settle this? This is Tony West strong arming corporations. Like I said, over time, West grew more brazen. He was already ripping off taxpayers. Now he grew more brazen. He's going after corporations now. You wonder why he's sitting at Uber right now. An email circulated saying that saying they ought to build a statue to West and bow down to his statue each day after we receive our $200,000 plus. That's what the DOJ little attorneys all in there was saying. Ooh, yeah, Tony West, is he's making all of us money. And email circulated saying they ought to build a statue to West and bow down to his statue each day after we receive our $200,000 plus. In this legal shakedown, California's general attorney at the time, Kamala Harris, was an active participant co-signing the agreements for her state. This shit is convoluted. Y'all got to understand what these guys are saying. When they wrote this article, they're exposing everything. This is why he ran over to Kamala Harris's campaign, because Kamala Harris was involved with him when he was the head of the Justice Department. This was going both ways. This is tit for tat. A bunch of attorneys and politicians playing sneaky games with our money. California's the general journey at the time. Kamala Harris was an active participant. The Biden-Harris administration has continued West's honest graft tactics to reward polit political allies on the taxpayer's dime. In 2021, a billion-dollar settlement with illegal immigrants claiming emotional distress was, was scotched only after public outcry. Tony West, remember, he did those 91 Hispanics and farmers. Then he grabbed all the Native Americans. He was notorious for grabbing race-based issues, racial issues, just like the Democrats do. Let's grab some racial issues and let's get some money out of this. Let, let's get a Black Lives Matter racial issue going. Let's. This is what they do. 2021, billion-dollar settlement with illegal immigrants claiming emotional distress. Illegal immigrants claiming emotional distress. That was right after Trump left. Because Trump was gone in 2020, 2021, Biden's there. So they say, hey, since you're here, Biden, let's play this game. Let's do this billion dollar settlement with illegal immigrants claiming emotional distress. But see, the public was tripping on that because they knew all the attorneys Tony West had involved, all the law firms he had involved, they were all about to get money. Everybody was about to get money because Tony West, Kamala Harris, Obama, they're about feeding each other's pockets. They're attorneys doing attorney games, attorney's fees, even though... The DOJ quietly agreed to pay attorney's fees to the ACLU lawyers in the long running case. So they didn't do the settlement. They did not do the settlement. But Tony West running the civil division at the DOJ in 2021. Even then, the DOJ quietly agreed to pay attorney's fees to the ACLU lawyers. This is all about lawyers. This is about political parties getting money on taxpayers' backs. This is a game, a graph going on right now. Recently, the Department 
have agreed to pay $2 million to FBI agents Peter Sock, uh, Struck and Lisa Page for releasing their anti-Trump text to congressional investigators worried about political bias. The DOJ, they paid $2 million to these people who were against Trump. They were more Republican, I mean, more Democrat. So the DOJ says, since y'all more Democrat, we're going to give y'all $2 million. We're going to give y'all a settlement for $2 million bucks for releasing those anti-Trump texts to the congressional investigators. The pair claim a violation of the Privacy Act, but the messages were sent on their government-issued phones, which contain clear banner warnings that users lack any reasonable expectation of privacy. So how can they claim a violation of the Privacy Act when you're on government-issued phone sending anti-Trump text messages back and forth and the banner on the phone clearly says you have you cannot have any reasonable expectation of privacy? The Department of Justice, the DOJ, had ample bias to litigate this case to completion before surrendering hard-earned tax dollars to the disgraced FBI agents. They had another case, just like with the 91 Hispanics and female farmers. They had a slam-dunk case. The government didn't have to spend no tax dollars money, zero tax dollars money. But they gave it up anyways because... Tony West, the DOJ, how they're paying attorneys, how they're settling cases so everybody gets money out of tax dollars. They have no recourse. This form of civic corruption is not bipartisan. This form of civic corruption, civic corruption is not bipartisan. At the start of his administration, President Trump attorney general banned settlement slush funds while one of the early acts of the Biden-Harris DOJ was to rescind that ban. They knew what they were doing. At the start of Trump's administration, the attorney general banned settlement slush funds. Biden-Harris, Tony West, Obama, they already knew what they were doing. Their attorneys, their attorneys, Settlement slush funds are about legal work. It's attorneys. Obama, an attorney. Michelle Obama, attorney. Tony West, attorney. All of these people are legal people, law people. And Harris and Biden said, let's rescind that ban. We need to get this money. Let's rescind that ban. Let's get this money. Democrats have used this year's convention to cry that Donald Trump is in the race only for himself, though not one of their many court cases against him charges misdirected government funds not a single case against donald trump not a single one is misdirected government funds but they're saying oh trump's only in his race for himself look at all what they're doing this is what the democrats are doing they're they're bilking tax dollars and corporate dollars saying you can settle volkswagen but we'll settle but you've got to give two billion dollars to the Democrats, and then we'll settle. And this is why Trump was having problems when he was in office, because every time the DOJ would do something, nobody would settle on anything because he was like, no, we're, we're banning that. They would just, and of course, Tony West and everybody else would just hang on. We're going to get him out of office. Once we get him out of office, we'll start settling once again. Meanwhile, the Tony West invented, Bush Harris operated, honest graft, Machine pours taxpayers' billions into left-wing activist groups, and Wes is said to be Harris's White House counseling in waiting. We believe that he's at Uber right now. He left Uber on August the 17th, 2024. He left Uber on a leave of absence to go to the, the Harris campaign. And they're saying he's said to be Harris's White House counsel in waiting. Hunter Biden, step aside. A new big guy's coming to town. Kamala, with the help of Tony West and his cronies, will show you how Honest Graph is really done. Remember, this is wrote by Daniel Huff, Clark S. Judge. Daniel Huff is a formal counsel to the Senate and House Judiciary Committees. Clark S. Judge is the managing director of the White House Writers Group Incorporated. This is real. This is really going down. This is real. I just had to let you guys see that. I really had to let you guys see that because to me, I'm looking at the decimation of the American trust, the integrity of our systems, whether it's the Department of Justice, how they use the DOJ to go after Trump. And then they turn around, use the DOJ to go get attorney's fees. They're secretly paying DOJ settlements to attorney's fees, even though they didn't settle the case. 
They're paying under the table to take care of the attorneys because that's what it, everybody's sharing taxpayer dollars right now. They're like, dude, it's a field day. They impeached Trump in one house. Like, I think it was the House, not the Senate, because he wouldn't give money to Ukraine. He wouldn't slide that slush money out to nobody. They, they was like, listen, Trump, if you don't give Ukraine money, we're going to impeach you. We're going to impeach you because we already made promise to these people. And what happened? Oh, he made a phone call to, to Zelensky and said, hey, man, they want us to give you some money. What are you going to do for America? If, if we give you this money, and they go, oh, that's a quid pro quo. That's a quid pro quo. You're saying if that Ukraine has to do something for us, for us to give them money. And Trump's like, yes. Is that a problem? We're giving all these people free because Tony West and the Democrats, Obama, Biden, Harris, they already had the Department of Justice. They were already running this scheme already. They had been running this scheme since 2009. By the time Trump came along in 2020 and 2016, he was like, man, I'm not down with all of this. I don't know what all this is all about. And he was exposing it all, busting it all. So, of course, what they want to do is get rid of him. Use the same DOJ that he was exposing against him when he got out of office. Every move he made, DOJ, DOJ. But they never once said Trump did anything illegal in government. He never moved funds around. When they said, well, he had government documents, he was the president. The president can declassify anything he wants to. Well, he didn't declassify. How do you know? Were you there? Who are you with? Who are you listening to? Lying government officials? Is that where you're getting your information from? A lying government official that said Trump didn't declassify that? These are the same liars, same liars that can't even sit in Congress and ask straight questions. They beat around the bush. The same liars that can't answer questions are the liars you listen to. I get my information from liars that can't answer questions, Jeff. That's who I listen to. I believe these liars. They can't answer a question, but I believe them. They are who they telling you they are. They're full of it. They're liars. Trump has exposed them and he is exposing them. So now it's down to the point where Tony West, with his honest graft, I just wrote y'all everything this man has been doing. People are reporting on everything this man's doing. So just know what's going to go down in the White House, why all these immigrants are here, why he, every time something turns around, they're using race. Oh, we're going to sue. Hey, we're going to even include people who don't even want to be in it. That's what they did. They included people who did. We ain't got no beef with the American government. Oh, trust me. Trust me. You do. You do. We're going to we're going to bring you in and we're going to include you in the suit. Suit went from one point three billion to four point four billion. And the whole time these people are like, but we didn't say anything. We did. Well, we, you guys are Native Americans. We're pulling you guys in. Don't worry, because they wanted those attorneys fees. When they settle, they get these attorney's fees. This is money in all their pockets. Obama's an attorney. Michelle Obama's an attorney. Tony West is an attorney. And guess what? Kamala Harris, she's a prosecutor. So she's basically an attorney too. They're all doing it. All these people are running a big, and they all need to be investigated for what they're doing. And I'm going to say that shit publicly. They need to be investigated for what they're doing. Everybody can see right through it. It don't take somebody with a law degree to see these people are bilking the American taxpayers. They're also coercing businesses. You can't settle unless you donate to the Democratic Party. They won't even let you donate to a to a conservative party. This is a crime. It is a crime using political powers. Somebody's got to step up to the plate. This podcast right here is pretty serious. It's pretty serious. I'm reading things from people that come from the White House. This is pretty serious. I'm reading things that come from certain committees, judiciary committees. This is pretty serious. This ain't just opinions what I just read you. These are facts of things really going down. And you got to say, these people are really up to some. Because I guarantee if Trump's name was attached to the beginning of this article and all of that was about Trump, everybody will be like, Lock this dude up, man. He's corrupt. Look at all this stuff. He, he's corrupt. He's doing this for his attorney. He's corrupt. But because it's locked into these black attorneys, these black prosecutors, everybody want to sit around and go, no, nah, Jeff, it's cool. D them our people, man. We got to support our people. I don't support criminals like that. And they know exactly what they're doing. Because of a podcast. I think your podcast has changed my life. And I'm going to share this podcast with everyone I meet. 